I'll, uh, I'll ask for the next speaker, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Martin Dresmer. Uh, he's our guest speaker from Austria. He, he's well known for the Dresmer technique uh, for DMEC. He's one of the uh, people who advanced the DMEC and make it more uh, popular uh, worldwide. Uh, Martin, the is yours. Yeah, hello everybody. Thank you for the kind invitation to be here. So, um, I want to start my talk with a big shout out for this guy, uh, Gerrit Mellas. Uh, I was happy to spend almost two years with him in Rotterdam and learn a lot from him. And he gave us all these uh, nice uh, techniques we are now um, using for uh, treating endothelial or corneal disorders. So uh, I think the DMEX surgery is very well known. It is a gold standard for endothelial disorders. It gives us a very quick visual rehabilitation it gives us a superior final visual acuity compared to others. It shows a very, very low rejection rate. It's a very quick surgery, so it's almost uh, as quick as a cataract. And uh, it's showing less complications. You, show the video, you see the video on the right side. This is a kind of a standard DMAC case. And uh, if there's um, no concomitant eye diseases, I think it's quickly done in 10 to 15 minutes sometimes. So this is um, a slide from, the, um, from Germany, from the keratoplasty register. And what we see here is very nice because we um, observed that, oh sorry, that in uh, no nowadays we have 95% of all the endothelial keratoplasty procedures in Germany are DMEC procedures. So there's basically no DSEC anymore. So either PK or DELC or a DMEC procedure. So that's very nice. What's new? There are some new devices and new techniques. So uh, as you probably know that the DMEC grafts are now available as pre-cut, pre-loaded, pre-stained. Uh, it comes uh, in a cartridge, so it's comparable to an IOL, uh, pre-loaded IOL. And I just tried it once and it works out very well. So it makes things very easy, especially for starters, for beginners of this new technique. And uh, it releases some stress, of course, because you don't have to take care about the preparation, staining, whatever. Uh, the intraoperative OCT and a new preparation technique. So the intraoperative OCT, sometimes it might be very helpful. As you see, in this, this is a standard case. I just want to show how it works. You see it's, um, uh, the graft is inside, but there's still a, a little fold. And you see in the right picture, that um, uh, right at the top, that it's right side up orientated. So it's always the endothelial on the outside, so the scroll is uh, correctly orientated. And for, um, for this, the interoperative OCT could um, sometimes be very helpful. At the beginning, I thought I don't need it, but uh, retrospectively, in a few cases, I was very happy to, to could use this device already. Um, the liquid bubble preparation technique, it's something, uh, a no-touch technique, um, which could be very easy. So we create a sub tunnel, insert the cannula with tripen blue and create this decimate bubble. So um, in this case, you not even have to, to seal the tunnel with a, a spear or so. So sometimes, if you're lucky, you could even just dock on, the, on this tunnel and uh, it's a very easy, easy technique and it's uh, basically 100% no touch. So, but uh, we want to go deeper. We want to uh, show what's, what's, what's new, what are the next steps in endothelial keratoplasty. So if we go back approximately 12 years, um, we observed that the cornea could show clearance despite graft or partial graft detachment. So that might be the evidence that endothelial cells might migrate and uh, uh, kind of um, uh, colonize the posterior stroma again. So as you see here, for example, it's even upside down the graft and it shows an almost normal pachymetry, at least in the cornea center. So uh, the next steps were that we used smaller grafts, so like hemi or quarter DMEC, and even in these cases, we observe corneal clearance. So that means there that endothelial cells somehow um, migrate and could clear up the cornea again. This picture is from our University in Munich. You see on the left side, this is um, 
the endothelium, then is the, the, the cut, so this is a desmetorexis, and then you see the endothelial cells migrating on the posterior stroma. And um, so knowing this, it was a question of time that uh, colleagues coming up with uh, another technique or broach. It's called DWAC or DSO. I'm not sure whether this discussion is already uh, decided or not. It, it's the same thing. So it's desmetorexis without endothelial keratoplasty or desmet stripping only, depending where you are. So thanks to Greg Maloney from Australia. He's one of the uh, pioneers in this technique. He, uh, provided with this video. So what we basically do is um, just a desmetorexis. So um, be careful so that we have smooth edges of the decimate because we want that the endothelial cells migrate over this edge. So uh, central part of the cornea, uh, it's not clear how big this rexis should be, but you want to remove gluta, of course, uh, but you also want to gain uh, kind of visual quality, so it's something between three and probably five or six millimeter. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Just remove uh, viscoelastic. There's a discussion whether you use an air bubble or not to, to, to press the, the, um, the edge of the distance membrane to the posterior stroma. So there are many questions still uh, potential advantages are you have no immune rejection, no steroid-induced complications, of course, no detachments, less intravenous complications because it's a very easy surgery, no donor issues. That's probably the, the most most impact, and it's a very simple technique. You might need rock inhibitors for, for doing that, so that's a, um, a key point in this technique. So this was first described by Kinoshita. Um, it kind of smoothened the muscle of the cytoskeleton, skeleton, which drive or which, which makes the endothelial cells uh, more um, active, so to speak. We don't really know what it's really doing, but the endothelial cells uh, behave um, more active after using riposodial or rock inhibitors. So what we know is that approximately 80% uh, showing uh, clearance after that. The time to clearance varies most often, so within three months. It's less known about the patient selection, so whether which kind of Fuchs dystrophy doing better, so which kind of mutation is the TCF41 mutation better than the others. Early Fuchs, that might be, this is the, 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 the consensus right now that the early Fuchs doing better. What about the cell count, pachymetry, age? Yeah, and surgical parameter may influence the uh, result as well. So the size of the rexis, decentration, scars, and so on. The concerns about it, the average time for clearance is seven weeks, so definitely longer than in a standard DMIC procedure. It's only in early Fuchs patients successfully, and uh, you need drug inhibitor drops, which has some uh, side effects like uh, yeah, um, red eye and uh, also can uh, lead to gluta-like uh, deposits on the, on the distance membrane. And approximately 25% uh, of the cases do not show clearance after three months. So you have to keep that in mind. So just uh, briefly, injection of cultural cells. This is uh, another approach. Um, done by a group uh, of uh, colleagues in Japan uh, by Kinoshita. So what they basically do is they gather endothelial cells from a young donor, they cultivate it and multiple the amount of cells, remove the endothelial cells from the patient with a silicon tip so they keep the testis membrane in to just try to scrape somehow the, the deceased endothelial cells and then they checked the cells uh, plus rock inhibitors and keep the, pos the, the patient for a prone position for three hours. So the results, the first results were pretty promising as you know, so 11 out of 11 patients show uh, more than 500 cells and 10 out of 11 uh, showed a pachymerity less than 650 microns. So what about the long-term results in this technique? Also very promising. So you see the endothelial cells, the left uh, red box, and the pachymerity on the right. So it's almost mm, what we know from early endothelial keratoplasty uh, results. 
But the cell loss is also comparable, but not really comparable to DMIC, but because we don't know the baseline of the cell, so how many cells are injected and so on. So um, there was no episode of rejection. One patient showed steroid response. The rest we already uh, discussed. Um, the problem, or one of the biggest problems, is uh, the clinical practice. How could you bring this in your practice? I think it's a very, very demanding setup and um, might be in future relevant, but right now, um, probably not. Uh, I have to skip that because I got already a warning. <laughs> so I just uh, want to show you one project. Um, we started uh, in Munich because the idea was the GUTE is a kind of a barrier for the endothelial cells so that they not could migrate to the centra. And the thing is, we want to remove GUTE, but keep the basement membrane. So keep the distance membrane, but remove the GUTE. That would be the, the best option. What we know where endothelial cells feel very comfortable, they could migrate over. And uh, I was thinking about do it the other way around. As we do it in PTK, for example, where we smoothen the surface of the cornea, we probably could also the, the, the surface of the inside of the cornea. And I found a device, it's an, an, an eczema up internal laser used for glaucoma surgery. And we tried to really like um, clean and shape the, the, the gute. And uh, somehow it works out in the lab. So we, show, we showed clearance after three months using riposidil as well. Um, but the thing is, it was very, very hard to uh, deliver the right energy or deliver the energy properly. We don't know how far or we, how close we can go to the scooter. And uh, so there are some, some tasks to do. So a summary, uh, the most clinical data we have from DSO and DWAC. So there might be um, some more data in future. The cell injection therapy is successful uh, also in bulls cardiopathy patients, but less clinical data available. A very, very demanding setup. We don't know uh, much about the complications. What about these cells? Migrate probably in the anger, probably block the anger, glaucoma, whatever. So um, to sum it up, DMIC remains the gold standard for endothelial diseases. And uh, yeah, we are looking forward to what the future brings. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Martin. Uh, great innovative uh, approach uh, to different uh, procedures.